When I arrived at the track, everything looked promising. That is a Vauxhall Corsa. Ah, there's a note. It's from Pinky and Perky. Dear James, hope you enjoy taking this to the max. P.S. It was developed at your most favourite place in the whole wide world. Oh, God. James drove that Virage. Aston Martin have launched a new car. And here it is. It's called the V12 Zagata. There it is. And uh, James, you'll be particularly interested in this, mate, I think. Will I? Yeah, you will. You will. Uh, because the, the boss of the company was quoted this week uh, as saying, the Nürburgring is where we sign off every new <laughs> Quoting. And there could be no better place for the new V12 Zagato to be finally tested, said the boss of Aston Martin. The crying out loud. <laughs> Do you know what? If I'd been in Bomber Command in 1943, I would have bombed the Nürburgring every single night. <laughs> Am I the only person who thinks like this? This bad back of yours, would you say it makes you a bit crabby? No, it's nothing to do with my bad back. I'm not the, he's got a bad back as well, but he oh, won't okay, agree with okay, me about okay. it. OK, Ride is important. All right, all right. Bomb it. <laughs> it was a bad policy. Look where we are now. We no longer have Dresden Cathedral or all that lovely pottery, but we do have the Nürburgring, and under my bombing policy, we wouldn't have cars that rode badly, and you'd have a nice cathedral to look at and better saucers. <laughs> Is this going to be a five-minute argument, or do you want the full half hour? No, because I actually agree with you. No, oh, for God's sake. Look, the point is, Aston already make the DBS and the Vantage S for people who are enthusiasts of the Nürburgring, but why haven't they thought that there might be somebody who wants a fast Aston, but maybe has, I don't know, backache, for example? Yes, I agree with that. Oh, shut up, man. Don't you not realise this, <laughs> this could have been that car, and it isn't, and that's a tragedy. I know. You are I such an idiot, honestly. Anyway, we must now find out how fast it goes round our track. Why? <laughs> now, I would like to have a conversation about the Nürburgring. Go because, on. this is important, last year I was delighted. The people who run the Nürburgring in Germany, they said they were going to ban car manufacturers from setting lap records. Sorry, there, why which... were you delighted about that? Because that's an excellent idea. Because if you make a car that is excellent for doing a fast lap of the Nürburgring, it will be useless as a car everywhere else in your life. It's like, it's like setting your house up to play Laser Quest. It will be brilliant for playing Laser Quest, but it'll be rubbish for a dinner party because it's full of lasers and darkness and fog and music. <laughs> and people running around thinking that they're in Star Wars. Or you could get a dog. You could train a dog as an attack dog, which is fantastic if you own a scrapyard and you need the dog to guard it. But if you take it home and expect it to be a pet, it will eat your children. <laughs> it's completely useless. That's what happens when you set a car up for the Nürburgring. Yeah, this isn't really a conversation, James. No, I think we've accidentally turned down Rant Lane this week. <laughs> well, there's more, Oh, he's actually. off again. No, no, but the thing is, the... The bad news in all this is that they've decided that they will allow car manufacturers to set lap records again. Well, that's good. No, it's bad. OK. Because think of the cars that have come out recently that we've driven that have been developed so that they would go faster around the Nürburgring. BMW M4 GTS, you can't deny it, it's a terrible car. Yes. Nissan GTR, the track edition, that is a terrible car. Even Seat, the Seat Leon Cupra 280, that's got a hatchback record for going around the Nürburgring, and it's rubbish. The Nürburgring... Ruins cars, I'm developing an app for the smartphone called Bomb the Nürburgring, where you guide a Dornier 17 over it and blow it up. What are you doing on this programme? Talking sense. <laughs> Good question. I, I, I don't know. Because we have this old woman who has a baking show in Britain. She's called Mary Berry. And it would be the same, you probably know, she's probably the same as her saying, I hate cakes. Yes. <laughs> Mary Berry would agree with me, because if she made a cake that had been developed on the Nürburgring, someone would put... <laughs> Fried onions on the top and completely ruin it. You'd have a Victoria sponge with onion on the top for no reason. James, you know you're weird. Don't that's you? not weird. That's the most sensible thing that's ever been said on this show. You no, are weird. Not weird. Uh, he is weird. We were coming through the airport here the other day, coming through Chicago, and he went, Jeremy, smell my jacket. He said what? <laughs> yeah. He did. He said, smell my jacket. I said, why? He said, because it smells of old record players. Mate, that is weird. <laughs> and it, but it did. You know record players don't smell of anything. 
They do. Old ones do. They smell of old record players. Who knows what an old record player smells like? I'd like it smells us, of decaying electrical I'd like us to move it on vowels. because it's getting scary now. What do you That's what not the record doing? player. Smells of anything. What do you want about? Does anybody have an old record player or anything old electrical? They smell, don't they? they Does anybody smell. ever smell an old record player, really? You think you have? You've, you've smelled an old... God's truth. <laughs> Did it have a wax cylinder on it, your old record player? <laughs> What? It's like old plastic and warm rubber. Yeah, exactly. You see, no, that that's exactly the spelling of his special yeah, drawer, is that? <laughs> You're actually talking to Thomas Edison there. He invented <laughs> the record player. Isn't he? So, it was developed on a track, and it's brilliant on a track, but on the road. Yeah. Well, I'm very pleased to be able to report that my prejudices remain completely intact. When you add the word Nürburgring to the name of a car, it's really just code for ruined. Because the ride is absolutely rock hard. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh. I mean, car makers become obsessed with making their cars go round this irrelevant historical German racetrack as fast as possible without realising that they're ruining the car for those of us who live in the real world. Ow! It's utterly hopeless. It's not just ruined, it's expensively ruined, because this car costs £22,000. With a few options, like leather seats and sat-nav, it's over £24,000. This isn't what I meant when I said small cars can be fun. Unfortunately, viewers, I then had to cancel the rest of the tour, because after just a few hundred yards, I was too cross to carry on. Oh, God, I don't believe it. They've done it. I've got everything turned off. I've got sport off, the firm suspension off, but it's still too jiggly. It's been ruined by the ride. Listen. Rattle, rattle, bang, bang. That is not necessary. The Virage, then, is a missed opportunity. It could and should have been a comfortable gentleman's express. Instead, it's just another pointless, bone-shaking racing car. I don't mean to be hurtful or disrespectful, but... Um, well, go on, spit it out. Well, it's just because we've been here doesn't mean we necessarily have to go on to wedding. Aww. It, it's, it's, it's me, it's not you. No, he's right. It's been going so well. And if we go on to wedding, we'll have to carry on and on and on mm. through routine, boredom, resentment, spare bedroom, temptation, affair, discovery, remorse, revenge, divorce, and then it's death, or you could turn off through online dating, meaningless sex, bottomless regret, financial ruination, and then heart attack, and then, then you end up at death anyway. Exactly, Hammond. And that's why I'm suggesting that instead of going to wedding, we go to the Nürburgring. Oh. <laughs>